Warning, this is not a podcast for those who have got it together. We are men seeking answers to the questions that have plagued our mind. Can we be undefeated? Sean, what's up, man? I like that. Is that called? There's a name for that head thing. My headband, my junk band, junk junk band. Is oh yeah, man. These things, these things are life. Because my hair's, (laughs) I I, I haven't had a haircut in a long time. My hair's getting pretty long and out of control. Yeah, I uh, I wouldn't look good in one of those because I uh, I don't have long hair. The hair helps. Cool. The hair helps. Like when I've got nonsense going on up here, I've. I had times where I've cut my hair short and put the headband on. I'm like, oh, it's not the same. <laughs> so what's been going on in Sean's world? Oh, man, same old, same old. Uh, trying to balance everything. Doing the uh, gym, scrub tech. and You've got a, quite a few more members lately. Yeah, I had a – so one of the guys is one of, is one of the guys that wanted a key. He was working at the police station, and then he got put on night shift. And I agreed to give him a key. And then mm-hmm. he's back on days, and so he's been showing up with his wife. And yeah. then uh, two other ladies joined a lady and her daughter. And she's she's nineteen, so I mean she's not like it's not like a kid, but um, yeah, they both came one night and both signed up. So, well, good. So it's good. So I'm actually more than just breaking even. I'm actually technically making some money every month now. You know? That's so, great. That's yeah, great. it's it's exciting. It and really you know, is. it would it wasn't too long ago that I had told you about. Uh, when I got to thinking about it, I was like, man, if I could actually get to like 15 actively paying members, I would have a decent little chunk of money to play around with every month. You know, yeah, for to- the, you guys that are listening. Uh, so this is Sean Schubert, friend of mine. Uh, he's been on the podcast before and he uh, recently, I'd say what, six months ago, something like that started. Uh, the gym? Back in October, October. when it officially kicked off. Yeah. So of course, going through the growing pains of, trying to get new members and trying to, you know, figure it out. And so congratulations, man, on yeah. the new members. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And really, if you think about it, I mean, we're impatient. At least I am oh, yeah. be impatient. But For part sure. of it is like, man, it didn't really take that long when you really yeah. were thinking about it. Yeah. It, you know, I, my biggest thing was mitigating the risk. I, the hard part was finding a building that wasn't ridiculous. Yeah, uh, and that I got kind of lucky on that one. So, yeah, well, I, think I say I say lucky. I say lucky. I mean, I I was patient. You know, I've been we've been looking for. Yeah, you are. That's probably gosh. If, you, if you're if you're really honest, gosh, we've been I've been talking about this for over a year now. Yeah, you know, before we actually pulled the trigger on it. And I think what's funny is I think that most people that I know they're they're either impatient, they jump the gun. Yeah, I have a tendency to do that. Um, or they're patient, but never pull the trigger. Uh, that's and me. <laughs> so you're patient, but you actually pull the trigger. So yeah. that's, I hear a lot of people talking over and over again, like, I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, mm-hmm. I have friends that do that. <laughs> so, and but yet they never pull the trigger. They you never know, actually do it. There's this idea that, um, and it's like a psychological thing where if you run through your head, like if you're trying to, you know, motivate yourself like you're going to go work out or you're going to start this project or you're going to do whatever it is, your brain will actually release that dopamine reward just by thinking about it as if you've already done the task. So it actually, if you're not careful by just thinking about it, you have taken away your initiative to actually go and perform the task because you've already got the dopamine reward from thinking about it. So I think that's what... You know, I can see that. You know, a lot of people call those dreamers. In other words, they yeah. dream about it, but never actually do it. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, part of it, and actually they put a lot of thought into it, a lot of effort, um, maybe even money into yeah. it, and yet never end up doing it. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it's it's kind of like there's not, it's finding that sweet spot because part of it is you do want to be patient and you want to, find the right situation. You want to find the right timing. Timing is important, but also if you never pull the trigger, then that's definitely a flaw as well. Yeah. So good like, job uh, on that. Thank you. Yeah, I like Dave Ramsey's talk on it because he'll talk about with people with the aim, 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 aim. And he, 
yells, shoot something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and I think, you know, part of it, it's like, I know whenever I really wanted to do something, there's also a fine line between maybe you have a, a few mentors, you know, two or three guys that you talk to and you tell them your idea you have both sides. You have the side of the guys that are kind of negative about it and like, eh, I don't think that's such a great idea. <clears throat> and then you have guys that are positive about it. And so, you know, part of it is also going with your, maybe your intuition on it. It's yeah. even despite maybe your friends or mentors saying they don't think it's a great idea, yeah. but I think you have to kind of listen to the advice. Yeah. Well, maybe. you know, and I think it, you know, it depends on understanding who that person is. If, if you have a mentor who is always negative about it, well, one, maybe you should yeah. reevaluate why, if that person should be a mentor in your life. But like a, a perfect example is you, you've always been a very positive mentor in my life. I'm, it's very rare when I say something, you're like, yeah, you should totally do that. And it's a good idea. And, you know, back to a different building I was looking at when it was, you know, triple what I'm paying for this one. Mm-hmm. When, when you went, uh, I don't know about that. That, that really caused me to pause. It's like, man, if Earl's telling me to slow down, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I really should pump the brakes here. Cause you know, typically that's not what I receive from you as a, as a mentor. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, on my side, I have a tendency to, you know, go full force, kind of like a, I call it a bull in a China cabinet where I'm like, I'm just going to go, you know, and that has not always proved to be uh, the best way to go about it. And, you know, I struggle with that at times because I want to, you know, I get something in my head and I just go forward despite, you know, what may be the advice I'm being given or, you know, whatever. So that's definitely an area I need to work on. (laughs) So um, what about me? How I have uh, just completed auctioneer school. Yeah, how was that? Pretty awesome. Uh pretty tough. You yeah. know, I, I told you this before that I really enjoy uh I enjoy public speaking, which for those who are listening who may not know, you know, that's actually a miracle in itself because you know, I I grew up very low self esteem. I you know, getting in front of anybody was probably my number one fear for many, many years. And so over the years, just through work and just through doing it, I've kind of overcome it, but I still struggle with it. I, I have a tendency where I can get in front of a group and I can bomb it. You yeah. know, I've done it several times where I just bomb it. Yeah. Um, or I can get in front of the group and people are talking to me afterwards like, oh, my gosh, that was the most inspirational thing I've ever heard. And, yeah. you know, so I struggle, but it's something I really enjoy, you know, and I'm always looking for opportunities to do more of it. Uh, and those re- opportunities really are are pretty rare at this point. Um, whenever I'm like working, you know, for a company, I their opportunities were more there. Um, and so this, you know, if I had to pick something that was like going to a school that would help you uh, getting in from the public, public speaking, this would definitely be it because it's almost like I'm not a singer, you know, I don't sing, right? Um, but yeah, yeah I love music, you know, yeah. and so I think part of it is I just have in my head that I can't really sing. But I think the other part is I've never really yeah. tried. So maybe I could if I actually tried. Yeah. So actually, maybe. auctioneering is kind of a um, a combination of singing and speaking. Um, yeah, because they, course, they everybody... actually call it. Yeah. Don't they actually call it rapping? Um, they call it a chant. They call it a chant. So that's I've heard it. That's the big phrase that they use as a chant. And and so, you know, of course everybody thinks about the fast, super fast, you know, auctioneer. But when you do, there's really two areas where you do super fast uh chanting or auctioneering, and that's in the car industry and in uh And you also do it in the cattle industry. Yeah. And those two is because you have professional buyers. Like when you, uh, the car right. action, you have literally, you know, dealers who are professional yeah. buyers. They're not really listening to all that. They just want to get through it. And they literally sell a car like every 30 seconds. Yeah. And I mean, every day in America, pretty yeah, much. I believe it. And then you have, and so they speak crazy fast. I have videos. I posted a couple on TikTok, but. 
They talk so crazy fast and mm-hmm. you don't really understand anything they're saying about one, yep. two, yep. three, you know, I remember and they emphasize so. those numbers and those guys are, you know, they're you to get that job, you would literally have to, I mean, you really have to be gifted in that ability. And same thing with cattle. It's like a lot of those are professional buyers most of the time at cattle auctions. And so they're buying for the beef packing plants. But if you take a normal like charity auction or let's say a state sale or a real estate auction, you know, it is a normal, slow, a lot slower. You can because you want people to understand what they're bidding and you want them to think about it. And and so uh, but I've been practicing every day since I got back, which oh, you know, cool. it, it's because like my speed is not there. Yeah, it's really not. And and it's so funny because when you go to this class, it's literally like counting. Yep. And yet you can get up in front of the whole group and forget how to count to 10. <laughs> I mean, literally. And, really? and and that happened to me. You know, I overcame like, you know, I'd struggled with. You know, like things in the past where if I try something new, then during the process, something really kind of negative happens. And then it's like, oh, you want to quit and you just don't Oh, this isn't for me. And I had that moment kind of in the middle of it because at first I did pretty decent when I got up in front of the group. And then the second or third time I got up in front of the group, I just kind of bombed it. I couldn't think of numbers. I, you know, I was tripping over my words. And I uh, walked away from that experience going, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? This oh, is yeah. not right for me. You know, all that negative talk. And I just had to really push myself to do it more and do it again and do it. And the good news is, like, every single day you had to get up in front of the group. And then we did a um, we did a charity auction, which that's a whole nother story. Um, but ultimately we ended up raising like twenty thousand dollars amongst ourselves, which That's is the cool. craziest thing ever. That's wild. But you know, I was, you know, it was on live and on Facebook and and man, you know, it really became more fun at that moment because everybody was enjoying it. And I kind of yeah. got a glimpse of what it's really like. Yeah. I, I would assume in front of a you know group when you're trying to auction off things. But Excuse me, I'm still working on the speed. I mean, the yeah. speed is just, you know, and it's really, again, counting. That's all it is, yeah. but doing it. And also being a, you're almost like a conductor when you're up there and you have to yeah. keep track of bids. You have to keep track of where we're at, where yeah. we're going to go. Definitely yeah. a salesperson thing. Yeah. And and I haven't always been real, you know, loving the whole salesperson thing. Yeah. Uh, so, but you're a salesperson and you get up there and you try to get people to bid one more time. And um, anyway, very interesting. We went to one more story about that. We went to, as I mentioned, we went to a professional car auction in the Dallas area. It's crazy because there's all kinds of implications about these auctions because what's happening is any vehicle that like is sold on the market for that maybe that's used or even slightly used, but pretty much they go through this auction process and dealers are buying it. I mean, the only way you can get into these sales is if you're a dealer. And it was very interesting to see like a vehicle that's only got 2000 miles on it and what it's going for at the auction. Yeah. And then it goes to that's dealers wild. and then we ultimately yeah. buy it. And then you have like older vehicles and it was just really crazy to see it. And it happened so fast, literally like less than a minute for every car. And then those, those auction that the price that, that let's say you have a truck that's a 2020, um, what it goes at the auction for the North, like average price that actually sets the loan value for like, if you went to go buy a 2020 truck, and you wanted to get a loan on it at the dealer, that sets like really what the loan on it because of the auction prices. So it's it's a whole it's a part of the industry that I didn't really understand. And it very there, I mean it's 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 very fast paced and it really affects a lot of the things we do. So interesting. Pretty crazy. And the female, there's not very many female auctioneers in that yeah. in, in that business, in any in auctioneering business. <clears throat> and uh we we got to listen to a world champion car auctioneer female oh, and she cool. was just 
phenomenal. Yeah. You know? And then when I was actually on the auction block, they had eight lanes going at the same time, all Holy less smokes. than a minute for every car. Holy cow. Um, and uh, I've listened to a female auctioneer there and I mean, just killing it, just, you know, going hundred miles an hour, you know, anyway, very interesting, very interesting deal. But what at this point, I'm not sure exactly, you know, obviously I, I don't know if I really talked to you about this, but part of my idea is that I've been trying to find a way to grow, you know, the home care business. And part of that is I just see this niche out there where there's this company that is, yeah you know, nationwide, they are opening franchises to do estate sales and, and really help people transition to nursing homes or after someone passes away. Yeah. And I see this market availability out there, be able to combine the two things that I'm trying to do, which is the home care, sitter and companion services, but also combine that with uh, <clears throat> um, kind of the real estate side of it, yeah. where we could we could either do an estate a state sale or we could do a um, an auction for personal items, and then possibly au- either auction or sell their their property. And so it's in, and I don't know re- really how I'm going to exactly put those two things together, um, but that's kind of my, my business model right now. You know, I told you a number that I really wanted to hit a number. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I was struggling finding a way to hit that number based on what we currently do, because we've been at it for, you know, almost, I think seven years and we really, you know, yeah, I can have really good months where I double my revenue, but not this <laughs> consistent, you know, double uh, of revenue. And so I'm like, I think this is maybe the gap that will help bring the revenue to where it needs to be. Um, but I learned one thing really important through this uh, auction school, because they don't just teach you how to get up there and auctioneer. They teach you how to run the business yeah. of auctioneering. Oh, and cool. that is a whole nother beast. But one of the things I learned is that it's kind of like if you said, Hey man, I want you to come sell my personal property at, you know, at our house and just get rid of everything for us instead of having a garage sale or instead of trying to sell it yourself on Facebook marketplace. So, Hey, I want you. So I advertise for it and I come in there I mean, you know this. It's like you may think a refrigerator is worth a thousand bucks, but it may only bring two hundred dollars at uh, just like a garage sale. Mm-hmm. And so, when it all comes down to it, it's like on a normal house, you're really not going to make much money because there's not much there right. when you advertise and when you have man hours and all those things. Mm-hmm. And so, what I started to realize, if, if with without the existence of some really expensive items, and or uh, like equipment, like farm equipment, or, you know, if you have a going out of business and they're selling their equipment without, without those things, you're really, there's no, um, there's no profit there. Yeah. And so I, I can kind of have to rethink some of those things because I have to almost attach a real estate deal with it. If, if you want me to come do that auction for you, then I can do it. But I also want to be able to sell your house. And if yeah. we make those two agreements, then I think it works. If we don't make those two agreements, then really it's, man, you, I don't think you walk away very happy. Yeah. And I don't think I walk away very happy because literally, and it's your house or mine, you pick it. It's not just your house. But I think that when it was all said and done, if I did that for you, we may make, I may make $500. And well, you may make five hundred dollars, yeah. But you can see that's a lot of effort for five hundred dollars. And you know, if you think about what ha- typically happens within a family, anything of value, a lot of times it may come down to like Papa's truck kind of yeah. thing. But well, what ha- typically happens to that is it goes to the eldest grandkid, yeah. And that grandkid ends up taking over a payment. So just like you said, there's not by the time you settle all the debts, you know, there's not any money. Yeah, so, yeah and, and you're you're so you bring up a great point because if like for example if uh, you know somebody passes away, well mm-hmm. of course you know if if somebody in our family passed away, then the family is going to go in and get the things yep. that are important to them. Yep. Um, you know they say guns, for example, are a high you know item yep. that goes well at sales, but you know this, it's like the grandkids are going to come in and get yep. the guns and. 
And no. so there, when it's all said and done, there's not much there, even though grandma may think that there's mm-hmm. thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Uh, you know, it's, but, it's, it's funny because like in a situation with my grandmother, uh, She's dealing with that because my grand my grandpa literally has a significant collection. I mean, we're talking hundreds of firearms. You know, I that he has. when it when it comes time, I'll I mean, to- I mean, I can I can let I can let her know because she because she's honestly she's at a point where she doesn't know what to do with it. All. It's perfect, you know, because you know, in that because situation. he he co- because he collected stuff like that. He also collected old planes, like the hand planers. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, he, literally hundreds of them. And some of them are, from what I understand, pretty valuable. But yeah, so so random idea. Have you ever, you know, because I think I brought this up to you once on your home care thing, you know, approaching it more of a elderly daycare as far as trying to brand it to that way when people see the name of your business, they automatically connect the dots of that's what you do. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, you've talked about people tend to confuse it with, with home health. Well, it's not really home health. It's, right. it's more of a babysitting type service. Um, have you ever looked at the numbers of what it would be to actually open a daycare facility for elderly people? Yeah. And that, that is a thing and that you have to have a license for yep. it. Um, and really, so you would find it, you, you would find a location, you would have to have it inspected. You would yep. get a license for it. Uh, one of the reasons I've kind of steered away from it. And it's the same reason I've had this, you know, brought up many times. Like, why don't you just convert your, you know, sitter companion service into more like a home health? And the answer is one is there's lots of competition in that realm and it's very expensive to get in and the overhead is very expensive. So, but the daycare in that situation, the competition is not really there as much. Um, so there's less competition, but the overhead is what, and the regulations is what has kind of deterred me from doing it. No. Um, because, you know, you know, this is that I used to own a nursing home and man, it's the mo- second most regulated industry in the nation. So I'm like very leery of going in very regulated area sure. because it. I just wondered reg- if regulation costs money, a lot sure. of money. I just wondered if like the actual daycare side of it, if it would be a little less regulation. And it could be, I need to look into that. I actually will look into that because I've never. Because, because if you could, you know, taking some of the ideas you've told me before, you know, and this is reaching out, if you could combine the daycare side of it with that that too, you know, how does that play out? Because man, you talk about high demand and being able to charge a freaking pretty penny is daycare for kids. It's unreal. Yeah, but, I think I, I I think you definitely bring up a good point. That's something I need to look into a little bit more. But you know, I'm really part of it's like I want to. When it comes to this auction deal, it's like whether it's starting a new company or just expanding existing. Is I really want to go? You know, I don't know a better way to say it, but go in direct competition with this national company. Yeah. With the idea that I think we could do it better and local, um, and um, and I think also there's a lot of um, I don't know a lot of cost and fees involved in that situation. Whereas I could reduce some of those fees because yeah. of being local. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm really, but like I said, I'd have to. It would have to be a situation where real estate was attached to it to really do well. Yeah. Or uh, it's a situation like a farm. You know, farm yeah. auctions are a huge deal here. Sure. That happens almost monthly. I would say yeah. multiple times a month. And those things can be very you know lucrative yeah. for both for the person selling and also for, for the company that's helping them sell. Yeah. So those things, I don't know. I, I really want to, I'm trying to find Real, yeah, for me, I'm just trying to find, you know, kind of my niche and my way in this whole yeah. thing. You yeah, know? It, it'd be interesting to, because now I'm brainstorming the whole daycare facility thing, because, you know, one of the problems you have now with the in home service, while it's a great service, you have to have for every uh, customer you have, you have to have an employee. Yeah. Whereas if you're in a situation where it's a daycare facility, you know, I don't know what the regulation would be, but if it's, you know, like kids, you know, for every, 
12 kids, you've got to have one adult. So yeah. you take away some of your stress there. You could actually technically pay a little better, which would give you better employee retention, but you don't have to hunt down, yeah. you know, the hundred people you would need to have employed in order to build it to the number that you want to build it to. I think that's a great, that's a great point. I'm going to look into it. I do. I, I mean, it, it'd be interesting. Yeah, at least it'd be an interesting from, from a research, research standpoint, you know, you yeah. know, what would the roadblocks be, but. Yeah. I feel like, especially in where you, where you're at, real estate probably isn't quite as outrageous as it is, say, like around here. Yeah, um, at least that was my experience when we lived there. Is that it's a lot more stable people. here. It doesn't have yeah. the high peaks or the high lows or the you know big lows. You know, it's and that's where you know you've ran into probably a lot of regulations with nursing homes because you wanted to create a you wanted to create a place for uh, giving elderly people dignity in their last few years by giving them companions through pets and through children and activities. And, you know, a daycare facility might give you a place to do that. And then that's going to be appealing to say, you know, if I was in a situation where my grandmother needed a place and I needed someone to keep an eye on her, man, if there's a daycare facility where she's going to be around children and and animals and like, man, I'm, I'm picking this place because I know that she's going to have a good day. I don't have to feel bad about dumping her off here. Like, yeah. cause she's probably going to look forward to seeing these kids play and, you know, things that you've been thinking about for the last 20 years. So and I think that I mean, maybe you just hit on also something golden, which is um, doing some kind of combination of both. Yeah. They care in for children and they care for elderly. Yeah. And, you know, some combination where they can interact together through yeah. at times during the day. Yeah. And that you're right. That's something that I've really pushed in the past. And I think that, you know, you know, one of the things I was talking to my counselor about it and, and she brought up a great point. And it's really something that I'm struggling with. And I didn't really realize I was struggling with, struggling with it until she brought it up. But she's like, look, you've been in this basically in the healthcare nursing homes for 24 years. And now you're in this place where, you know, it's like real estate sales, you know, and in other words, I've been caring for people for 24 years and really look, not that I didn't want to make money or need to make money or trying to, but part of that is like, cause you know, I've had a hard time stomaching some of the, the sales parts of the, yeah. the real estate deal because, you know, Yes, I have a lot better perception than I had before I went and got my real estate license. But my perception is that some of these, you know, realtors are like used car salesmen who, you know, um, basically it's like they're not there to really help you. They just want to make money. That was kind of my perception. Now that I've gotten my real estate license, I don't feel that way. I feel that the majority of them are trying to help you and trying to help you figure the good ones are. Um but I also I think I struggle with it a little bit because, you know, with getting my license and being associated with a broker that I have to do sales training and I have to do this kind of marketing. And and part of that is I've had a hard time with it. And I didn't really realize why, um, you know, they're yeah. selling in healthcare too. There really is, you know, like every sure. nursing home I've ever been a part of, we had to increase our business, our revenue, our census. And that was a big part of it, but also in the name of really helping people. And one of the the struggles I've had is like, you know, not necessarily just in real estate, but other industries are like, I'm really helping people. And I'm like, uh, really? Are you really helping people? I, you know, yeah. to me, it seems like, eh, I don't know if you really, <laughs> I think every yeah. business says that. Well, we're sure. really helping people, but yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But, you know, part of it is I had to learn that there's different levels of help. You know, if buying a house is a pretty big deal, you know. Sure. And and a p- pretty big stress, selling your house is a pretty big stress. I mean, if you guys had to sell your I house think, right now, absolutely. it's a huge stress. Where are you going to move? How is this yep. the timing of it? So I do see that there is. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and especially like a misconception that people have is that using a realtor to sell your house is going to get you the most money for your house, especially if you pick the right realtor. And, you know, that's, you know, a lot of people like to argue whether or not your house is an asset. But I think for all intents and purposes, your house is absolutely an asset. You know, 10 percent on your largest assets, a big deal. And, you know, if having a realtor gets you that extra 10 percent, then you're you're significantly helping people. Yeah, I I think it goes 
you know, you and I've talked about this book. It's come up pretty several times with people I've talked to, which is Rich Dad Poor Dad. I, yeah. I, it was definitely a, a an early influential book, and he has for me, and he has a concept in there that I have pretty much lived by. Um, and sometimes I forget it, but it's I, I believe it's true for everybody. And that is to hire professionals, you know, get people like, for example, you, you anybody can learn about accounting. Yes, you can. You can mm-hmm. go take a course. You can do some online training. You can read some books. But is that the best value of your time? You yeah. know, for you as a gym owner, is it the best value of your time to be spending 90 hours or whatever in a course to learn accounting right, and, probably not. <laughs> and, and and you see what I'm saying. And so yeah. it's, it, yes. I mean, I think that we're pretty smart people. We can learn how to broker a deal. We can learn how to do accounting. We can learn law, but I think that let, you know, kind of in that issue, you know, use a, a funny saying, but I think we have to learn to stay in our lane and do the things we're really good at and let people do the things that we're not so knowledgeable about or good at. But I believe I strongly believe in hiring professionals. So, you know, you need a CPA. If you're running a business, you need um, a, a possibly a lawyer, you know, if there's legal matters, you need a, a broker, a realtor, if you're going to, you know, sell your home or buy a home. And let me tell you why I, I've seen it. Like I, I, I see this all the time on Facebook marketplace where I'm selling my home and and I know and I've called them to try to say hey would you be interested in letting me sell your home and almost every time it's no you know and they don't want to pay the commission and I and I'm like oh my gosh the commission is nothing when it comes down to it you know Like you said, you could really get a lot more money for your home if you would yeah. actually have a profession. And that's the thing. That's the thing. You almost need to convince them that, like, the I'm going to make you more than what you would lose in commission versus what you're selling your house at now kind of thing. Plus time. You know, yeah. time, it's like, you know this, Sean. It's like it, the value of time is very underrated. Yeah. You know, your time is very invaluable. And so if you... If if, you, if this house ends up being on the market for a year, then, I mean, just look up the concept of time value of money. Yep. The dollar now is worth more than a dollar in the future. Yep. And so if you can get that money six months faster, then it's definitely worth it. You know, yep. I think it's a time value of money, but it's also, you know, getting somebody who's an expert in that area. Plus, can you imagine somebody tried to do this? I call the I had a, a potential buyer. It was a young family and they wanted to buy this house and it had for sale by owner. And so they drive by it every day and they say, man, we want to contact these people. Well, I have to contact them because I'm working with the buyer. I have to call and say, hey, are, would you be willing to work with a realtor? And and and, and she said something so crazy. She said, <laughs> well, we can just do a quick claim deed. And uh, yeah. you know, which if, if people don't really know what that means, like, for example, if something happened, you know, like, let's say that your mom gave you her house. Mm-hmm. Well, you could do a quick claim deed in that situation. And mm-hmm. it probably wouldn't be that big a deal because she's giving you the house. It's, yeah. We don't need to do all this stuff, title search, whatever. But can you imagine first time home buyer? I'm going to yeah. do a quick claim deed. And. When they get ready to sell it five years from now, which is the average time people mm-hmm. live in a home, five to seven years. Yep. And guess what? There was this lien on the house that you weren't aware of, and yep. now you're screwed. Yep. And, and it's like, oh, we're not, I'm not letting my client do a quick, quick claim deed. I'm going to, yep. we're going to do it right. Yep. Make sure that there's no liens on this property. Make sure yep. there's no issues. Yeah. You know, because those things are nightmares. And it's like, but in her mind, I'm going to save three to 6% or whatever she has in her mind yep. by not using a realtor. And we can just do some quick claim deeds, but it's pretty crazy. And you know, what's so funny is a bank. Most people need a mortgage in order to get a loan yeah. to buy a house. But, you know, in, in that case, the mortgage, the, the, the bank is not going to go for that stuff. Yeah. You know, you're not going to allow that to happen. So. Yeah. But I mean, all right. So now on your back to you and your adventure. So what um, what's kind of like 
I feel like you've crossed a barrier, which the barrier has been like, let's get over break even. Yeah. Let's get over. Now, what do you, what, like, and I think we talked about it, like camaraderie, fellowship mm-hmm. is another word. You know, really, that's important in, in the way that you, your gym is is kind of, you know, set. How are you, what's your plan now for this, like, to really keep these members, keep them, like, what? what's your goal at this point? Yeah. Do you think? So the nice thing about it is, since it's small, you know, I know everybody's name. I know a lot of the background and I'm, I'm trying to be really careful to cater to those few individual people. And like, for an example, yesterday, um, two of the ladies, one of their big things is they, they like to be there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's freaking slicker and crap out here on these roads. It's ridiculous. We were, yeah. we went to work yesterday. And everybody was in a pissy mood because they made us come into work, but you know, people needed their surgeries done. And, yeah. um, and I had to have the decision of whether or not to open the gym up last night. And I mean, it was, it's slick. If you, you can't do more than 20 or 25 mm-hmm. on the roads in town, or you will spin out and get in a wreck, whatever. And one of these members text Cassie asking if I was going to open the gym. And it was like, I was like, it's almost a trick question. And so it's like, yeah, I probably, I probably should open the gym because yeah. you know, I don't like there's literally the first time after they've paid me, Oh, sorry, the gym's closed. You know, so just paying attention to little things like that. The gym's only seven minutes from my house. If they want to brave it. They're adults. They get to make that decision. So, I, yeah. you know, it's like I, I need to cater to that a little bit. Um, she, you know, she's already asked if it's open for it. And um, where was I going with that? I got interrupted. Um, so, and there are a couple other leads um, of people who are interested. Rhonda and her husband. Rhonda is currently trying to talk her husband into coming into the morning class. Whoa. Yeah, I'd like, man, that would be that would be excellent. Um, and then, just so people listening, Rhonda and I used to work together. Uh, we're friends, and then her and her husband has visited me here whenever I had the ranch, and she also worked out. We all worked out together whenever I was working in that area, so that's how we know her. Um, Shout out to Rhonda. Yeah, and then uh, one of the guys, the guy that has a key to the gym, he's a police officer. He's got several people who are kind of asking about it, wanting to know information on the gym, but their challenge is um, they're working evening shift change and stuff. And the two classes I have right now don't fit their schedule that great. So I'm talking with him. Like I, I could potentially with how my work schedule is, I could set up a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class at like two 30, 3 PM. And uh, you know, almost offer them kind of a discount. Cause like, if you can only, be here the three days that I'm open. Then, you need you know. to follow my advice here on this one. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Like for police or fire. It's yeah. like, Hey, we're, we're giving you guys this rate. You yeah. Know. Which I kind of am. And I told Casey that it's, it's kind of a cheaper rate for them. Um, ju- just because, you know, they won't be able to have access Monday through Friday. So, um, so I'm kind of following that lead. I'm in an interesting spot because I think the most people I had in the class on one of the nights I had seven people in class and both my kids there because my sitter was sick. Um, so man, that was, it was fun, but it's chaos. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm just about capped out. I think on how many people I could have before I have to start getting really creative with workouts, which, you know, I'm up to the challenge. So I'm excited that my other leads are actually pointing to filling up some of these other slots. Um, you know, because that's kind of so you talk about goal, and so that's kind of the goal is like I'm gonna see if I can capture some of these leads of showing some interest, and in, mm-hmm. because if, if if there's a goal in mind, it would be get um, up to 15 paying members, and I think I'm at seven. Yeah, it's all kind of about that halfway mark, something like that. Good. I a couple of ideas that I've had that I wanted to share with you to think about. One is, um, well, back to the weather thing. No doubt my busiest class was during the worst weather. Because people so, want to get out of the oh house, man. God, they want to get out of the house. <laughs> I, I dying, promise like... you, I dealt with that same thing. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I, like other people like, oh, no, you shouldn't open the gym. Yeah. And I'm like, I almost had to because yeah. everybody wanted to work because <laughs> work out. And let me tell you another reason why, because they're not going to work. 
yeah. a lot of them because on those ice snow days or whatever, and their kids and they'll bring your kids. <laughs> let's go. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, truly, I remember like blizzard type conditions and yeah. we we're up there working That's out wild. and I have a huge class where everybody's yeah. there, you know? So I'm, I think that, that's not what people think. It's it's literally people want to work out during that. The good point. news, man, is that those heaters that are in my gym, those things are awesome. That's like, my it, problem with my barn. Man, it doesn't take time at all for those things to get that room warmed up. So, like, typically once the workout starts, no matter how cold it is outside, we're turning off the heater. So, I've at least got that going for me. So, that's, yeah, I, that's, that's a, that's a right huge now. plus, man. You so. know this. It's like if you go into a barn. I felt this uh-huh. when we were at training, you know, last week in Dallas. You know, it started to get really cold for this cold snap. And, man, we go out of the hotel into the parking garage, and the parking garage felt 20 do- degrees yep. colder than outside. Yeah. And so same thing with, like, my barn, which I don't have heat. Like, it's like a it's a real struggle because, yeah. I mean, right, like this morning – I think it was 15 degrees or whatever. And man, I, it is no way. And I tried it. Oh, I'm going to go out here and brave it. And it's miserable. Yeah. My hands are freezing from you almost to the have bar. to. Yeah. You almost have to get you a pair of gloves, like some of those mechanic yeah. gloves that are almost like they're a real snug fit. But just get the gloves. You have to get the freaking yeah. hoodie, the sweats, the beanie. And you, and you have to put it on in ways that you can strip layers without being completely exposed. Man, I, I've done that crap, man. Uh, when we lived out in Rocky, you know, I had a a little shop thing there, and it'd be twelve degrees outside. I'd be in full gear after lifting weights. Yeah, yeah, that's something I'm, I haven't got there yet. Um, so, but here's my idea. I, I think that, and I know other people have done this. I, it's not like a unique idea, but I really thought a lot about your video that you put out. It was a, a TikTok about like basically at home, at home workout and here yeah. and you, I thought, I thought it was really good. And I think you doing more of those, but with a combination of something else, first of all, like I think doing these things consistently, whether it be once a week or whether it be, you know, I mean, I think if you're very ambitious doing one every day, but I yeah. think probably more realistic is like once a week, but I also, and I've seen you talk about these things in the past where doing videos, videos, where you are cooking something that is very healthy and like a kind of your go-to yeah. like, I oh, mean, I really, this is a good meal to make very easy to make and maybe showing that in a video. And I think doing the two combinations where here's some, you know, you don't have the equipment kind of videos is good. And then also maybe some like quick videos about, Hey, making food that is healthy and good for you and easy to make uh, something that, you know, that you do. I think both of those things, because like, for example, I remember, and I made it, you had, I can't remember exactly what was in it, but I want to say like sweet potatoes and, and hamburger meat or something. I don't remember what it was, but was that close? Was that the rice and hamburger meat? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that like the, I actually went, I went and made it, you know, and I used it in some meal prep, like where I ate it for, you know, multiple days. Yeah. And so I think that's a good example of something that like, I think people struggle with like that. I know it's like good to have some other ideas that are simple. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you know, you're obviously a pretty fit guy and that you're, you eat pretty decent and it's like, okay, sharing some of your wisdom. This is, you know, something that I do to make it easy for. And yeah. but I think those kind of videos would do well. I mean, if you think, and I know that just like me, you don't have just tons of people following you on social media. Um, but, you know, if you question in your mind, whether doing that video was, was beneficial, it was because this morning I did that workout that you did in the video. Oh and yeah. So, yeah. That's and cool. you could say, you know, I, and for, again, for people listening, they may, that may not seem like that big a deal, but first of all, you know, I'm very knowledgeable on how to make workouts too. And, mm-hmm. you know, in other words, I don't necessarily need it, your, those thoughts, but I actually enjoyed it because I'm like, Hey, yeah. this is a good way. You know, this is a good workout. I don't have to think about it. 
I need to do one inside because it's too cold out in the barn. Yeah. And so I actually did it this morning. And so it worked. And whether and and it worked, I think, to a little bit of an extreme because I in some people's mind, I'd be the last person who would need to that video, but it's not true. <laughs> I no. needed it just like anybody else. And then the food thing, I, I think it's another testament to to say. You know, I know how to eat correctly. I do. But also hearing new ideas and new mm-hmm. thoughts. And, you know, you've given me advice over the years about, hey, this, I like this kind of protein or whatever, yeah. or pre-workout. And I think that those are all great content for you. Hmm. You know, I think that when somebody sees somebody who is very fit and does a good job, um, you know, with their fitness and their their uh, nutrition, that they look for those kind of hints, you know, like good ideas. So it's same thing. It's like, hey, um, this is the workout, a pre workout that I drink, yeah. and this is where I get it from. Um, and I know, like, it's not obviously, you know, you're not looking. Well, it'd be great if they were a sponsor for you, but that's not the point. The point is, yeah. is that hey, I'm trying to help my people. Um, right. w- with different ideas. So I think you should consider that. But I think right. the only c- caveat I would put in there is that you'd be very consistent with it. Yeah. That That's like a once a week or whatever, hey, on Mondays or whatever day, I'm putting out this video and it's either a workout, home workout that you can do, or it's, you know, there's all kind. I think you can expand that into all kinds of things like, um, I don't know. I, I think you can be creative with it. Like this is, and 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 I think you start with the things you do. Like a man, yeah. You probably just take it for granted that this is your routine. That I take this, and I'm just throwing out something that I do this pre workout an hour before I go work out, and then when I'm done, I take this protein drink or whatever. You know, yeah. I'm, I think that some of those things that you just take, you know. It's for granted because you just do it. Yeah. And and I think people would be interested in what those things are that you do. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I'll you know to, what I mean? I'll have to really Man, we're talking about a 15 about second, 30 second minute video. Right. Not that big a deal. And it's like, you know, it, and, and, and what's funny is that Cassie can video you while you're cooking the food and then just chop it up and put it in there, yeah. you know, fast or speed it up or whatever. Yeah. And I think uh, people will be interested. Yeah. What do you think? To, uh, yeah, no, I think you're right for sure. And it's, you know, it's, you look on social media, it's not the thing that can be discouraging about that is it's not hard to find people who are already doing that. People who are already doing cooking videos and workout videos and supplement videos and literally all the things. So I guess for me, it would be trying to find for my particular audience who would be interested, who know me personally, whether through growing up with me or as an adult and uh, finding things that would get their interest simply because they know who I am versus, you know, not necessarily because it's the best thing you can find on the internet. Cause there's always going to be somebody who can put out better content, but yeah. I guess make it more relatable. I, you know, I would love it. I don't know. I think we're all looking for simple ideas to better our health. And then, and, and it does take work. I don't want to, like, you are consistent when you go to the gym and you're consistently working on these things. And you have been for a while, years. Yeah. And the same thing with your diet. It's like been fairly consistent, I believe. And, and I know that you have times when it's not. But I think that it, so it's not easy. I, by any means, but I think that maybe this one meal will help me realize that I can quickly make my supper, you know, a lot healthier by just falling and easier and quicker or whatever, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's this, I don't know. I, I think people will be more interested in that than, than maybe you think. Yeah, possibly. Cause I'm interested in, I mean, I, I think about the questions I've asked you in the past. Hey, what kind of protein power do you use? What kind of pre-workout do you use? What kind of, you know, whatever. So those are all yeah. been part of it. It's funny. The video froze and you were turning, yeah. looking back and it just stayed there for, <laughs> so I was like, what's that? It's yeah. pretty funny. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Looks like we're back. Yeah. Yeah. No, those are good ideas. So like here, 
kind of talking about it right above my computer. I've got one of those at a glance calendars, like the big desk calendars. And that's what I use to write my programming on. And I like it because I can kind of see what we're doing throughout the week. That way I can like, okay, we've been working on this. It helps me remember like, okay, we haven't done this in a while. So let's do this again. And um, so I may need to try to do, and because I take a lot of, uh, I spend a lot of time really thinking through the week workout to where while we're doing this functional fitness, what looks to be like random workouts, it's actually not random at all. You know, I've got, I've got really specific purposes for each day and I'm trying my best to be careful to hit all the major muscle groups, but not put any two of them too close together. And um, like, as in, if we hit a big deadlift session on Monday, we're not going to do a bunch of heavy power cleans on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, I, thinking like it might be a cool video to capture some of my workouts all week and see if there's a way in less than say 30 seconds to explain what a week's going to look like and explaining how we're hitting, we're targeting those different muscle groups. We're talking, we're targeting different metabolic rates. We're targeting different skills, you know, and see if that doesn't capture people's, you know, interest. Because I guess if you're, just seeing my videos on my workouts, it looks pretty random, but if I could have a way of explaining in a very simple way of like, no, this is a very systematic approach where we're trying to target everything. Mm-hmm. I, don't yeah. know. I, think, I think that some combination of all that, you know, just yeah. consistent content out there yeah. is, you know, I think that's key. And I'll, t- you know, and I'll remind you of this as you're thinking about that. I think there's two things that we've talked about it, but I think there's two things to add into your, whatever your satchel of, you know, of things you do. One is, you know, I, I strongly consider like we did like a Sunday uh, partner, you know, workout yeah. every Sunday. Uh, and and again, maybe Sunday is not the right day. Maybe it's whatever day. Something where you where people are, can do it, where you feel like the most amount of people can get there yeah. one day. And I think that helps build that camaraderie where they sure. start to become, you know, that team workout stuff. That was our most popular day. Yeah. That was our most popular class. Like I could expect at least like 75, 80 percent of all members to attend that one class. Wow. And so, again, we are, and it became the favorite. It's like, oh, I don't want to miss it because I don't want to miss my friend. I don't want to miss these people I work out with. And I don't want to. And so that's one thing to consider. Uh, The other thing to consider is, and it might be that, but one element of like, and this may not be once a week. This may be once a month. Like throw in an element of like, a workout that almost seems impossible. <laughs> yeah. And I don't mean impossible. Like, obviously, yeah. you can still scale it. You can yeah. still. But the example might be, you know, and be very, you know, very thoughtful and sy- symptomatic about how you're going to do that, too. But it could be something like, OK, 10K run. Yeah. Uh, or it could be triathlon. It could be something that just like everybody wants to do a triathlon, but nobody wants to do it, you know, kind of thing. And it's like really thinking through, hey, we're leading up to it. Go borrow a bike. Go do this. And, you know, we're going to do this on whatever day. And as a group, we're all going to do it. And, And again, you can scale it to people's ability and whatever. But part of it's like, man, I, something about those like seemingly I, I picked the triathlon because I think that everybody wants to do one kind of, but yeah. they they don't have the time or at whatever to train for one. And yet, if you can do a kind of a smaller version of that, I think that people have a lot of fun. And you may only have five people do it, but five yeah. people, oh. man, I think that as they they almost become members for life. Yeah. At that point, you know what I mean? If they do those kind of things. So those are my thoughts. Just keep the keep those ideas in mind. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to talk about this time? Not that I can think of. And I sure appreciate it. You know, I appreciate your friendship. And uh, you know, you can always call me if you need something. Yeah, likewise. Bye. 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 Bye.
What? <laughs> Sounds like oh my gosh. Life. Yeah, Cassie's panicking. So. All right, brother. All right. Well, holler at me soon. All right, man. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to Positively Undefeated. If there was something in this show that resonated with you, please share the show with your community. Want the show delivered each Monday morning to your podcast app of choice? Please subscribe or follow. And if you'd like to get a hold of Burl, please do so by going to burlstricker.com forward slash content.